Since their debut in 2014, the VCs turbocharged engines have faced considerable criticism and hostility from F1 fans around the world. This is primarily due to their perceived lack of distinctive personality and character, and especially when compared with the iconic V10 engines from the 2000s, renowned for their shivering 20,000 RPM revving capabilities. However, these are incredibly advanced engines in terms of combustion science, energy management and thermodynamics. This power unit stands as shining examples of cutting-edge engineering, developed to meet the high standards for peak performance in Formula 1. Producing around 1050 horsepower, the F1 engine has six main components. The internal combustion engine, known as ICE, the turbocharger, the motor generator unit, both kinetic and heat, the energy store and control electronics. Let's go through each component to better understand how everything works. The internal combustion engine, known as ICE, at the heart of this machine is a compact 1.6-liter 4-stroke V6 that uses direct fuel injection. Tiny pistons aligned in V configuration work relentlessly to power the high revving engine. While this might give you a strong nostalgia feeling to the 1980s turbo era, when cars were fitted with monstrous 50 kg turbos producing up to 1400 horsepower while running on rocket fuel and spitting flames for their incredibly hot exhaust, here is a reality check to consider. FIA regulations force the manufacturers to add a fuel flow meter cap of 100 kg of fuel per hour. In addition to this, the red line of the engine is set at 50,000 rpm, but in reality you're more likely to catch a unicorn than witness it rev beyond 12,500 rpm. The IC spins the crankshaft, which eventually turns the wheels of the car with the help of the transmission. Following a dependable four-stroke cycle similar to our everyday automobile, it's all rather familiar territory so far. F1 cars, however, work a bit differently. You see, in the regular four-stroke engines, a rich fuel mix is injected inside the combustion chamber, meaning there is more fuel that can actually be burned. But in F1 cars, strict fuel flow limits demand a different approach. Every single drop of fuel has to be carefully controlled to make the most out of it for maximum efficiency. That's why, in order to run a lean air fuel mixture, engineers have developed a clever technique known as pre-chamber ignition. This works by splitting the fuel air mix into two places. A richer mixture is confined to a small chamber around the spark plug, while the primary combustion chamber contains a linear mixture. This setup enables the rich mixture to flow through narrow openings, leading to enhanced performance. In essence, this strategy optimizes the combustion process and contributes to the overall efficiency of the engine. Now let's move on to the turbos. The turbocharger consists of two key parts, the turbine and the compressor. The turbine is connected to the exhaust system and the compressor is connected to the engine's intake system. When the engine burns fuel, it creates exhaust gases that shoot out of the engine. These hot gases flow through the exhaust side of the turbocharger, causing the turbine to spin like crazy. Think of it as using the force of the exhaust to power a mini windmill. As the turbine spins, it powers the compressor on the other side. The compressor sucks in fresh air from the airbox above the driver's head, compresses it and forces it into the engine's cylinders. This increases the amount of air available for combustion, allowing the engine to burn more fuel and generate more power. As the air is pressurized, it heats up and expands. For best performance, air needs to be cooled up before going into the combustion chamber. That's why an air-to-air -air or a water-to-air intercooler is used on each side pod of the car. While Ferrari Mercedes opted for a water-to-air intercooler setup to achieve a more compact design, Red Bull Racing has taken a distinct route by managing to retain a compact side pod configuration, even while incorporating a larger air-to-air -air intercoolers on each side pod. The wastegate is like the turbo safety valve. It's a small valve that controls the flow of exhaust gases into the turbine. If the turbocharger starts creating excessive pressure, the wastegate opens up, diverting some of the exhaust gases away from the turbine. This prevents the turbine from spinning too fast and creating too much pressure, which could potentially damage the engine. The MGU Kinetic and the MGU Heat make up for the hybrid functionality of the F1 car and are amongst the most advanced hybrid systems in the world. In essence, the MGU, or the motor generator unit, serves as a dual function component. Firstly, it functions as a permanent magnet brushless AC electric motor, capable of propelling the car forward. Alternatively, when the car is not in full throttle mode, it works like a generator, recovering all that kinetic energy and funneling it back into the battery. Right between the turbo and the compressor stands the motor generator unit it hit. After the combustion has finished inside the ice, there is still some exhaust gas pressure remaining inside the cylinder. Excess heat from the turbo gases drives this unit to act as an electric generator to charge the battery. Working in conjunction with the MGU, the CE or the conversion electronics plays a pivotal role in the system. It converts the alternating current 
generated by the MGU into direct current, suitable for charging the battery. During energy deployment, the electronic power stored in the battery flows through the CE unit and subsequently enters the motor generator unit. The MGU-K is geared to the crankshaft, resulting in an impressive boost of 561 horsepower being ejected into the drivetrain, enhancing the overall performance of the car. As a motor, the MGU can help spin the turbo, but not create boost when on throttle as if it were an electric supercharger. Instead, the motor can keep the turbo RPM high when off throttle to act as an anti-lag system. With this state-of-the-art electric turbocharging system in combination with the pre-chamber ignition setup, engineers managed to achieve an almost 50% peak thermal efficiency. In comparison, most gasoline engines have a thermal efficiency between 30 and 36%. That's all for today's video. What's your take on the hybrid F1 V6 engine? Let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you found this video interesting, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel for more amazing car content.